Hello everybody, I'm Waldo Richards from the Game Train, and look at what we got here. Battle Cruiser Millennium Gold Edition. Now it says it's a Derek Smart simulation. That's no exaggeration. This is anything but a damn game, by the looks of it. But we'll get to the details later. This is a strictly introductory part right now. I haven't quite decided yet what to do with this thing, if I want co-commentators or not. But I wanted to do a little intro before we started. There won't be any gameplay right now, just a bit of um, beginner stuff. As it happens, this edition has uh, actual multiplayer somewhere, I'm not sure where. I don't see it anywhere around here, that's for sure. It also has a training academy, but I think that came with the Millennium Edition, not with a gold one. And some other things. Mainly the gold edition was here to do a lot of bug fixing. Which is good. It's always nice when uh, the bugs are fixed. But for the most part you'll see that it's not the bugs that make this game so fucking hard to play. It's a, it's a gameplay. It is the riveting gameplay that is quite impossible to decrypt for the most part. But we'll do our best to do so. Well, what are we gonna do with this game? Well, what we're going to do is a very simple thing. But first, let's go to new because talking over a menu is very old. Um, let, let's go with this save file. What they're going to do in this playthrough is a very simple thing. They're going to go with a free live system. There will be free playthroughs. All of them will go up until the point of the character's death. The character can either die, disappear, like become missing in action. Which is usually when you're stranded somewhere and just can't get the hell back to space. Or, uh, or you're, you get retired. Yeah, you can actually retire in this game. It just takes a while. Hopefully it, we won't have to survive that long, because if we, if we do, well, we can only imagine how many parts that'll be. At least a hundred, that's for sure. That's gonna be the oblivion. Damn. So, yeah, the first playthrough will be... Well, the first two playthroughs actually. They are already... They already have a predetermined starting settings. As you can see, we can choose some stuff for our character here before we start. Which we're going to do right now, actually. And the third playthrough... Well, depending on how popular this is... If the if the playthrough is popular enough, the third playthrough's uh, character will be completely up to you. You'll think of all the settings I need to put in here, and I'll do what you say. Just mm, just keep everything well reasonable, you know. We're not gonna use anything but the super cruisers. Because honestly, I have no fucking clue how to use any of the other classes as of now. I barely know how to use a super cruiser. I would like to learn how to use this thing first before dwelling into other classes. So let's get to work. First of all, we need to choose ourselves a name. Well, I like Sage Blinger. It's, it has a nice ring to it. We can choose to be either male or female. It's entirely up to you. It really doesn't matter what you take. I take male because I like male. I like taking males in video games. You might like taking a female, and that's totally okay, I guess. Keep in mind that there are no stats differences or anything of a sort if you take a female. They're both equal, which I think. Raging pussy feminists will enjoy oh so much because 
We're being oppressed so much. Yeah, right. We can eat a dick. Anyway, there are also quite a choice of races here. As you can see, we have Terrans, Empyreans, Vesperons, Credians, Kandorians, Mandorians. Must be somehow related, I guess. Zelons, Valkyries, Falkyries. Again, maybe some kind of relation. They're very familiar. They're very similar. Gamelons, Syrians, and Droidons. I'm pretty sure Droidons are like robot people or something of a sort. We always need those. And to tell you the truth, I have no fucking clue what any of these races are. We might find out later while we're playing the game. So I'm gonna take Terran because it's the humans. Why wouldn't you want to be a human? I don't know. Next up is the cast. We have quite the choices around here, don't we? The casts, I think they kind of determine your uh, gameplay. Like, what kind of a game you're going to expect. It's preset to be military, so most of the time you're probably gonna do more shooting rather than uh, more peaceful approaches. There are choices of Earthcom, I guess Earth Commander? Mm, I'm not sure. Insurgent, Military, well we already know what that is. Explorer, I think that's more or less a scout-ish kind of a thing. Again, I really don't know if these dictate how the game will be played. But I assume if you take Explorer instead of Military, you'll be less likely to be shot at by enemies around space. At least that's what I've heard and seen on the manuals. Which I gotta say are a pain in the ass to find. Where the fuck are all the manuals? The ones that are supposed to be 90 pages long. Where the fuck are they? I would like to read them. So, I, so that I would know what the fuck I'm doing. Scientist... Mm, I don't know. Police, raider, assassin, diplomat, mercenary, paramedic, trader, and commercial. I think trader and commercial are pretty much the same thing and they are more dedicated to money making purposes rather than fighting. But since I'm not good with any of that shit, we'll stick with military for now. Because that's a cool choice. Besides, don't you want to see some spaceships blown up? Of course you do. Now this is the most interesting part, I think, the career. You normally start off as a commander of this spaceship that you can see on the right, like, I'm pretty sure you can see just fine. But you can choose to be something different. Like you can be a planetary support pilot. Yeah, quite something, isn't it? <laughs> you can be an elite force pilot. Notice how when you choose a different career, different ships show up. That is completely normal because, well, you get to you get to do different things. Like here, mobile infantry marine. You don't even get a ship. You just get some armor, ammo, some guns, some auxiliary stuff like grenades. Oh, that's cool, actually. Oh, you can actually choose your choose your mouse yourself. That's pretty cool. Ah, well, this is interesting. We'll need to try this out actually. The second playthrough will be us being the marine instead of a commander, so that's gonna be for later. You can also be the elite force marine, but that's for another time. I don't think there's a huge difference. And then there's a space force marine. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think that all of the marines are pretty much the same, except that the Space Force Marine might have some uh, some neat little doodads here and there, like he has a jetpack I see. What about the others? Oh, he has a jetpack? Ah, okay. I see what it is. Mobile Infantry Marines don't have jetpacks. Jetpacks here allow you to fly around in space. Kinda like Space Engineers. So we'll stick with the military commander for now. This is our first playthrough, we might as well. Launch region. 
we can choose where we want to start our game at quite a few choices but they are all um, they're all centered around the solar system soul system you can't go any further than that I'm not sure about all these other planets I'm sure I still haven't heard of Lirius for instance or Ramis or Canaan but there must be somewhere close by because well it's around the solar system so yeah they should be somewhere close you can only start within your own sector within the Terran space so at least that's something we're gonna start at Earth because all great voyages must start from our homeland launch base now there aren't many choices you can start at Galactic Command HQ also known as Galcom wasn't there a game released by this Derek Smart guy uh, called Galactic Command I'm not too sure about that you probably know better than me and then there's the Genesis uh, space station but we'll visit it later because it's actually the closest station to Galcom HQ it's on the moon we're gonna start at Galcom HQ it's a good place to start a little bit active but it's a good place to start if you're not too familiar with this game and would like a more peaceful start choose the Genesis station it's on the moon and there's rarely any trouble ever or so people say I haven't seen that happen to me at all every time I go to the moon I get attacked now it's time for the assets as you can see we have some assets to choose from from super carriers to unarmed transports eh, we're a military commander and we're going without unarmed, with unarmed transports? fuck that we're not gonna do that let's check out the assets what we got here now naturally the super carrier here is a better version of a heavy carrier naturally and it's meant to be more more or less a mothership of a sort you'll have your I think you'll have your own fleet to start with I'm not sure actually but you probably can hire more people to for, for that purpose I, at least I think you can it's said that you can but I'm not too sure about it let's see what heavy carriers we got Ah, battle cruiser mark 2 3 and 1 oh look at this shit must be one of the homages from the older games and there's the night star looks like well the night star looks like two boats aligned to each other what the hell the megaron it looks lame <laughs> it looks like a train violon eh. looks kind of like a whale actually <laughs> whatever Super cruiser. Well, the super cruisers are very nice. Let's check out the heavy cruisers. Cruisers, on the other hand, they do not have uh, space for fleets. They do not carry other ships. They do have some of their own ships, like a couple of shuttles, maybe a couple of fighters. I've never seen those. But most of the time, we just have shuttles, and they're not dedicated to having fighters on board they'll usually do the fighting themselves let's check out the cruisers, the heavy cruisers what the hell is this thing? <laughs> ah. well, these ships look kinda interesting but not all of them are very flashy I guess let's check out the armed transports well, what is this supposed to be? It looks like a, f a piece of road just decided to lift off and go into space. Look at this shit. This is the driveway with the sidewalks around it. What the fuck, man? <laughs> and this one is even better. It's three pieces of the, the fucking road with sidewalks. What the shit? Ah, uh, Janstar. Mm, this looks more of a ship than the others, but very spiky I don't know why this looks like a plane if anything not a damn spaceship 
But I do like the designs, they look kind of funny. What about the unarmed transports? Well, these look like transports, so that's something. We'll stick with the super cruiser. Uh, let's just find the one I was looking for. What could be a good super cruiser for us to use? Warmonger? Nah. Garrett? Nah. I think I. Yeah, I went with this one. The Space Star. Yeah, that's a good one to start with. It's pretty good. I like this thing. We'll go with the Super Cruiser Space Star. And now we get to choose its name. I will go with the obvious choice. Whoops. Here we go. Luxembourg Special. Wait, did I just type it into the acid type? Um. Okay. <laughs> the last thing you can choose is your assignment. Free roam or campaign mode. Uh, campaign mode is barely different from the free roam. You get some missions. But the best part about it is that you don't have to do them. If you ignore the missions, they'll eventually end. And you'll be in free roam mode again. We're going to stick with the free roam mode for now. A typical military commander starts out with a couple of pistols. No, well, one pistol in particular. A wrist laser. Some, some trash. A combat rifle. A couple of grenades. A jetpack. A PDU. What the fuck is that supposed to be? Some medic kits and repair kits, some some nothing special stuff. Let's press accept. Before we begin, we get to look at our statistics and other useless shit. Let's have a look. So we start at the age 35. You always do that, not sure why. Alright, looks like the name did get uh, correct. GCV Luxembourg Special. We, start, we start at our primary base, Galcom HQ. We have a free roam assignment. Now look at this shit. Violations. Keep this one in mind. There's a bit of a legal system going on around here. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how it works. I know only one thing. If you have illegal items on board, when you go to a place that doesn't deal in illegal items, you're most likely going to get caught and the bastards are going to give you a violation. We'll put a little uh, stamp on your passport. It can have up to 10 violations. Any more than that? And you will get court-martialed. Ooh, That basically is a game over from there, so... But try not to get into too much trouble now, alright? There's apparently a salary that they're supposed to be getting, but I have no fucking clue how we get this salary and when do we get it. So, um, yeah, I think we'll just have to ignore that for now. We started with a pretty good uh, starting amount of dosh, $75,000. We can get a lot more just without even leaving the damn space station. Good, isn't it? There's some... Oh yeah, there's some medals that you can earn, but I have no fucking clue what they are, what they do, how you get them, so... Let's just ignore that for now. Oh, we have some crew statistics as well. We have 8 command personnel, 5 system engineers, 2 flight engineers, which are absolutely mandatory if you want to launch any kind of craft out of your ship. Five medics. Useful if you want to heal the fuck up. Ten marines. In case you get attacked. And some space for guests and prisoners. I heard some pretty, pretty interesting shit about prisoners here. You see, it's kinda like Mountain Blade. You can carry them around with you. But if you're not careful, the bastards will actually break out of their prison and will take will try to take over the damn ship. So gotta be careful there. 
wouldn't want to lose your shit. And if they take over the ship, guess what happens? They kick you through the airlock. That'll be the end of you. Better be careful. Let's see what he got. Here is me. I look pretty handsome, don't I? <laughs> you got the chief engineer Kendrick? Yeah. We got the black man in town. Who else do we got? We got a ginger guy, Tommy Brooks. He's the flight officer. Comms officer, Sandy Crane. Looking pretty good. Wait. Yeah, this is a comms officer. Okay. I, I got confused for a second. Navigations officer, Lana Kasugi. That looks kind of like a Chinese, maybe Indian kind of a person. I'm not sure. Combat officer Paul Resnick, America! Look at this shit, he looks like a typical American, doesn't he? Mm, like a jockey, if anything. I heard some pretty interesting stories. Mainly ones that involve him being left stranded on desolate planets because of his incredulous incompetence. But they're going to keep him around. See if the stories hold any truth. We got a medical officer, Allison Weeks, and a tactical officer, Kara Moran. And if you, you raging shit, thought this game was oppressive and misogynist, well, take that. <laughs> Ain't no bullshit like that around here. We got enough females on board. Now we got a, just about everyone from every race around here. Um, there's nothing interesting around here. All right. We should also take some stats in mind. Life factor, obviously, is how much health you got. That's obvious, isn't it? Fatigue factor, that's something you should keep in mind. Right now it's zero, which means everybody is well rested. If it ever gets any higher than uh, 50, you should probably get worried. If it gets more than 70, you're gonna need to drag the bastards to bed forcefully you don't want them to just drop dead artificial intelligence is where it gets the most interesting this determines how smart your crew is this number is not static though it'll keep increasing over time as long as you keep your crew active and actually working. It's the best way to get them to get smarter. However, it's also the slowest method. Seeing as how uh, someone did a calculation or something like that, you wanted to check how long it takes for the people to get to level 100 artificial intelligence. And it turns out that it takes a couple of weeks. Real weeks. <laughs> this will take a while and I don't think we'll ever reach the 100% so might as well not worry about it and of course there's a status right now it's active because that's exactly what they're doing they're being active they're being right where we belong you can also sometimes see a different thing show up like uh, off duty or I'm not sure about that one. Or on board something. Keep that in mind. You got some system engineers. Usually everyone has the same stats. And they will progress through these AI levels the same way, which is good. Now we got some marines. Marines are good because they can be used for multiple purposes. For instance, you, we have some shuttles. Who's gonna fly the shuttles? We do not have any pilots for that. Well, of course it's gonna be the marines. You gotta be careful though. They're not very smart when it comes to flying. And it is suggested not to take marines which have a smaller AI than 15% to go on shuttles as pilots. They might crash into the ground or into other things. Consider taking people that are smarter. We have no guests. 
and they sure as hell got no prisoners. I wonder if we can have more than five prisoners. We'll find out one of these days. Let's check out the logistics. Here we can check out all kinds of useful stuff, like what's going on with our systems. How healthy our systems are. Are do they need any fixes? Do 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 they need some replacements? Perhaps an upgrade. As you can see, everything is nicely listed for you. You just need to choose what you want. The command craft, which is our super cruiser, will have four different decks to choose from. They all have their own shit to worry about. So enjoy enjoy digging through this mess we do not have, have any fighter craft so we cannot press on the fighter craft button which is fc we do have shuttles we do not have different decks you will see everything just by clicking on the number the number indicates the shuttle we have two shuttles and we have the other craft, which is the buggy. Ain't that a cute little thing? Too bad it doesn't have actually working wheels. I've driven around with this thing. The wheels don't rotate. Mm, I'm not too worried about that. I really don't give a shit. We have two buggies, or three. Okay, we have four buggies. <laughs> That's a lot of buggies. Not sure if you really need that many, but that's good, I guess. There's some of the slowest vehicles to use, so if you're gonna drop off a buggy, make sure you drop it off close to your intended destination. Very close. Or better yet, just use a damn shuttle. Alright, let's see what you got here. Right, we can see our cargo. We got tons of shit in here, don't they? Yeah, we have quite a bit of something in here. We can have repair minerals. Oh, that's pretty cool. We can have spare parts. Look at all these spare parts. Shit, man. Lots of spare parts. We can have weapons. Damn, that's a lot of weapons. Mainly different types of rockets. But still. Oh, and here are the illegal items. Alcohol, artwork. Artwork is illegal? What the hell is this shit? Computers are illegal. Oh, fuck. Looks like my super cruiser will be impounded soon. And tobacco is illegal. This space is fucked. Special cargo. There's nothing in here. And I don't think anything will show up until you get that special cargo. Now let's check out the power. Here we can do some very important stuff that we should do before the start. Like turn off the launch control and transporter control. This is very necessary because if you don't have these things turned off, it is very likely that somebody will board upon your ship and try to fuck you over. That's not very good, is it? We can dedicate some of our power to other systems. That's good. Let's check in here. Here we can assign different duties to people, even yourself. We can tell people to go to the shuttles, to the buggies, to the medibay to heal up. And go off duty if you wanna rest. All the good stuff. Alright, oh, here we can also decide what stuff we can load or unload. I would suggest going here and unloading the mines. They will get you tons of money. Leave everything else. And there's a trade com. You should visit this place. Right, what do we need here? Out of all of this crap, what you need is 
Radin buy as much as you can get this stuff is your ship's fuel would suck if you ran out of it oh looks like we're all out of money not a problem just sell the mines that you unloaded and there you go you got all the money you need let's stock up on the fuel this might take a while we bought all the fuel we can get there are also some other things you can buy but at the moment I don't think it's necessary you can also hire extra personnel here no pilots though we'll have to find them somewhere else here we can choose where we wanna go you can move the map around with the arrow keys we got quite a bit of space to explore here we can go to any of these places we want even these empty spots which is pretty cool I think our very first objective will be to go to the other side of the galaxy since I have no fucking clue what we can do in this ah oh, here is our legend there's a downloadable version of this map which I think I'll be using more than this Hmm, we can actually visit all of the different alien races, I guess, while on the way to the other side of the galaxy. Yeah, I think that'll work. We can do that. This is the mission control. You can uh, read this if you want, but there's uh, really nothing interesting to do. Okay, okay, accept. Who cares? And there's the com link, it never has anything interesting to see. Well, besides these basic stats, I guess. And there's the log, nothing to see. And then there's a config. I got some stats here that I turned on. Everything's fine. Yeah, looks like that, that looks like we got everything. Once you're done click here you will see the Galcom HQ we, we don't have much else to do so that'll be it for the introductory part I'll see you next time